Hi everyone, I hope all is well with you. So this is Royal Empowerment and I want to say thank you to all of you who have been supporting this broadcast by just showing up, leaving your comments and just embracing this word that God has for you. So I believe it's, I personally believe it's important that we recognize that we're royalty at all times. Sometimes we come across these hurdles in life that makes us want to like get to the level of these folks with the peasant mind mindsets, but we always got to remember that we're royalty. So let's continue to do the best that we can to walk in that royalty. Now, today I want to discuss the topic of staying focused. And there is a word out here on today about staying focused. So it's important to understand as a king or queen that you must stay focused on the assignment. And part of doing that involves making the changes that you need to do in your own life to stay focused on the, on the assignment. So the biggest thing you want to do to make the simple is to remove all distractions. You want to remove all distractions that may take you off course. For instance, I know with me, when I don't eat right continually, I feel sluggish. I feel like slowing down. I feel sort of, um, I want to say, not at my best. And when I don't practice eating right, when I eat too much of the wrong thing, I start feeling pain in my body. So what's, what I'm going to start doing? Focusing on how to stop this pain, okay? Now I'm looking for medicine, whatever. And that could have been time where I'm, you, where I'm sitting down um, thinking of something constructive, but now i got to deal with this pain, right? So that's one way where you, you could minimize distractions if it's something dealing, dealing with your diet, what you put into your body. Um... Another example I'll use concerning that too, I recently told some people that I realized that I had drunk so much soda until it was making me depressed. And when you're depressed, sometimes your emotions can wreak havoc on you. It can make things seem bigger than what they are. It can make coping with things a little bit harder, especially if it's a physiological type depression. So with drinking sodas, that was bringing on a physiological type of depression because my body was ridding itself of the nutrients because of sodas or whatever. So I had to stop drinking sodas as frequently as I was drinking them because goodness gracious, I know I was inhaling them things like night and day. But I realized that I have to slow down on it so that I can feel better, so that my mood can improve. Another thing is, too, sometimes at night when I would go to sleep, I would have cramps in my legs. And so I would have to try to get up, drink some water, find something in the kitchen to try to help me to, to get rid of those cramps. So that's why it's important for us to remove all distractions by taking care of some things in our lives. And again, you can start with your diet. And importantly, oh my goodness, I'm about to go into this because a large part of what we deal with in life is people, okay? A large part of what we uh, face in life or deal with in life or communicate with in life is people. And I don't know anyone who can fully get around that, okay? But you also have to deal with the distractions concerning people. And what you want to do is look at the ones that you feel are slowing you down and why. Why is that happening? Does this person have a real purpose in your life? Okay. Um, some people can come and sabotage your happiness if they're not happy within themselves. So that, that means you got to take inventory um, and a lot of times these people that are not happy within themselves, they bring unnecessary burdens. 
They stress you out when they don't have to stress you out. They create the distractions in your life. And when they create those distractions, then what you're going to do, you're going to take away from that time that you need to be investing in your purpose or resting up to fulfill that purpose to deal with those distractions that they bring. Okay. And again, I want you to know and remember that the title of this message is don't lose focus. And I want you to pay attention to the things that could cause you to lose focus, stress and anxiety from trying to work around their foolishness. If this person brings foolishness or people bring foolishness, whoever it is, if they bring stress and anxiety, because you're trying to deal with their foolishness, you're trying to get them to understand you and they don't want to understand or they want to enforce their agenda on you. Um, it will take away from your time to work on your purpose. OK, so those are some of the things that happen whenever a person is getting in your way and they're being a distraction. I want to use another example from my life concerning this. So I was in a relationship that was very haphazardous to my health. Um, my mental well-being, I was brought down in probably about every area of my life that I can think of because I was in connection with a person that that was a distraction. And that person was sent on assignment from Satan to distract me, okay? And so I want you to know sometimes the, the wrong person will come into your life and they may act angelic for a season. And usually, though, when they're on assignment from Satan, you got some red flags. But sometimes we want to believe the best in people. And then we sort of overlook it. And you got to be careful about that. But um, when I was with that person, I couldn't prosper in my ministry. I couldn't prosper in my life, really. It, when I was with that person, I was stagnant. I couldn't move forward. And this dynamic here, I'm going to point it out to you in the Bible. Very shortly, I'm going to point that out to you in the Bible. All right. And the reason why that was happening, because the person was creating burdens for me to carry. So if you're trying to build your ministry and somebody else is putting something in front of you, stressing you out, causing you to run around, you can't focus on your ministry if a person is wreaking havoc in your life. So... That person was getting in my way, and it's important to know that the right person for you, whether it's a friend, significant other, or whoever, the right person will allow you to thrive in your purpose and respect the call that God has on your life, okay? So the right people, they're not going to naysay your calling. Sometimes on occasions, people may not understand, and that's just that they don't understand. But you want to be careful with that, too, because you know what God has placed in you. All right. It's nothing wrong with. Um, I want to say to a certain degree, I say be careful with it, but I don't want like, for instance, when I was talking about my Christian sorority to people before I before I got it incorporated. You know, you had some people, you know, looking like sorority, sorority, because their definition of sorority was something evil in their perspective. And I knew that my purpose with dealing with a Christian sorority was not meant for evil. It was meant to bring together women. But the people who've been looking from a different perspective, what they believed about sororities and things like that. That's what they were stuck on. And even though these was church folks to them, telling them about a Christian sorority is like telling them um, mixing God with sin. And that was just their perspective. So even though they didn't understand, I still had to stay focused. I still had to put this um, vision together, you know. I've had some, I had one person even yell at me one time because of her personal perspective, okay, about that. But again, in the midst, you still have to carry out that purpose. So, um, you want people that will try to understand where you're coming from, at least if they don't understand, at least 
if they will try and maybe sometimes some people they just got to see um where it goes all right but if they're just somebody that's going to get in your way they're going to slow you down they're telling you every reason why you cannot fulfill this thing that god has placed on the inside of you then that is somebody you may need to like get out your um take off your team okay all right you cannot be team me if you're against my purpose all right and that's how i want y'all to think they cannot be team you if they got a problem with your ministry point blank is something god placed in you and they got a problem with it they cannot be for you okay um now, getting to where I was telling you that I'm going to go is in the book of Joshua, all right? And it's about removing the cursed things from your camp, or I'm going to say the cursed ones, because some people, they carry curses because they won't let go of some things. Then they want to bring that mess to you. And I want to let you know that is very important. It's very important that you don't just embrace everybody that walks into your life. Okay, you can be kind, you can be cordial, but there are some people you're going to have to leave outside the door because they're bringing a curse in with them. They got some stuff they got to get right with God and now they want to chill and benefit off of you and they're bringing you down because they're holding on to curse stuff. All right, I'm going to show you how this is demonstrated in the Bible. All right, if you look into Joshua, all right, and I'm just going to tell you about Joshua. In chapter 7 of Joshua, it tells you about how him and the children of Israel went to battle, but they lost the battle because someone in the camp had stolen something. Now, when God addressed them, God didn't address that one person in particular. God said the children of Israel had sent against him, okay? So when you start to read into the first passage, it was because the children of Israel had sent against him, which caused Joshua's troop or Joshua's people to lose the battle. And even though it was a person, one person, God said it was the children of Israel, but because that one person acted that one person was in the camp of the children of Israel. So Joshua had to do some inventory because Joshua couldn't prosper with somebody in the children of Israel taking things, taking the accursed thing, okay? I want y'all to see where I'm going with this, all right? So when you have a person on your team and they are in the direct, opposite of what God stands for then that person is going to cause you to lose the same way that a person caused the children of Israel to become defeated at the battle of I don't know if they call it AI or A but that's what I understand that they were up against okay so you can have one person in your camp and they set you back because they're holding on to some accursed things all right. Um, so there is a good part of this that I'm going to share, but I want to deal with um, the part where Joshua had to do some inventory. He had to go through and shake some stuff up. Right. He had to do the I want to call it a shakedown going through these families, figuring out who got the cursed objects, who got something that they don't belong. So sometimes you got people that are coming to your life. They got drama. Drama is a curse. Every time you turn around, somebody want to fight. Every time you turn around, somebody want to come into your life. They ain't got nothing going on for themselves. They don't have a vision. They don't have a spiritual life. They're just simply, they're just simply coming into your life, trying to, to, to go with your flow. And the only thing they're going to do is get in the way. So, they found out that it was Achan that took those cursed objects. They, they, they found out about that. And so now they had to get rid of Achan and his whole family. Oh, back in the day, oh my goodness. 
back in the day, whoo, I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his mercy today because back in the day, your family member did something. They take out the whole family. They take out everybody. They want to make sure none of y'all come back for revenge. If, if that was any of us, they want to make sure none of us come back for revenge when they go after that one person that did something wrong. Think about it now. In some cases, like with Daniel and the lion's den, what happened? The people that, that, that got Daniel into the lion's den, they took out the whole family. I would surely hate to be the child of a parent that committed a sin against God's people. And then now they getting rid of the whole family. Your whole family got to go because your whole family got to die or suffer because of what one parent did or because one parent conspired against something. So I'm just grateful for God's mercy, okay? Because there are plenty of people out here today doing stuff. And you could just imagine it probably be like one person left on this earth if they did something with everybody in the family because of something they did and they got rid of the whole family, okay? So I say all this because it's important for you to recognize that you cannot put everybody in your circle. You cannot have everybody on your team. And if you know a person is carrying drama, they're carrying some curses. Let's say if you know this person don't like God, you got some that don't understand God and might be spiritually blind. And that might be somebody you're supposed to help. But then if you got somebody that's just anti-Jesus, then you know that's somebody that can't roll with you. Okay. You know, that's somebody cannot roll with you all right so they had to do away with Aiken and his family and let's just thank god that they ain't did us like that okay <laughs> oh goodness it ain't funny but i just thank god that you know we ain't living in that that era where they're just throwing away the whole family okay at least the kids get to live today i hope but we still got to pray for this nation. Still got to pray for the nations around the world. But anyway, just keep that in y'all minds. Pray for these people. Pray for us. Pray for all y'all. Pray for everybody. But um, when you go to Joshua 8, okay, when you go to Joshua 8, you see that Joshua and his troops, they get victory. They get victory. Okay, and let me tell you how they get victory. Now, a lot of times when I read the stories in the Bible, you hear about how they slew X amount of people and stuff like that. But here you go in Joshua. Not only did they slew the men of the tribe of Ai, they set the city on fire. Okay? They set the city on fire. So when you get rid of some of the wrong folks, you're going to realize you can set the city on fire. That means you can do some stuff that you, you would have never thought you would have done because you've been able to get focused. You've been able to sit down and concentrate. You've been able to put in some thoughts. You've been able to plan and prepare. You've been able to focus. You're not fighting battles that you don't have to fight. You're not explaining yourself to people that don't want to understand you. You're not trying to defend yourself against foolishness. You got some people that are coming with a distraction and they want you to sit there and play their games with you. You got some people, they know you, they did you wrong, but they want to defend their wrong. Y'all, I'm telling you, I got to a point when I see that now, I just stop arguing. I just stop arguing. Have a good day. I'm not calling that person because I cannot have a relationship with anybody that's not trying to listen. Okay. And it doesn't mean that people don't make mistakes, but we know which ones and we should know by now which ones are reasonable and which ones are going to do something immoral and then try to gaslight you on it. Okay. And those are the type of people you want to remove from your camp. Some, it might be temporarily, some, it might be for good. And it doesn't mean that if you remove that person for good, that um, they can't ever get saved or, or hell is their destination. You remove that person from good and you pray for that person so that they can find Christ. Maybe they don't appreciate you. Maybe they don't appreciate the anointing in your life. 
Maybe they don't. Okay. But when you have done all that you can do, the only thing you can do is let them choose and see God. If I, when I think about it, okay, nobody forced me to receive Christ. I made that decision on my own. Okay. When I realized that certain things didn't work in my life, I don't know. I was just like, I might as well just go to God. And that's how I ended up becoming a Christian or really walking in my walk, you know, but, um, when it comes to it, to stay focused, you have to, you have to really consider what could be getting in your way. And like I told you earlier, it could be your lifestyle, the way that you eat. It could be certain other things or, or habits that's getting in your way. But we have to take inventory to make sure that we don't lose focus. Now, I told y'all, and y'all know at times I do have a prophetic word for you all. And this one here, it, it deals with tunnel vision. OK, and in this season here to get to your next level, you're going to need to use tunnel vision. OK, and God says they have to get focused. They have to get into this season focused. They're going to see great things manifested with being focused. So in this season, you have to just do everything you can to stay Focus. It don't mean that you won't make mistakes, but when you see that something is getting you in your way, like I've been telling you this whole message, move it. Move that thing out your way. Make the changes. As kings and queens, we have authority. We don't have to settle and sit with something that is not up to par with our expectations as long as it's um in righteousness, okay? We got to make sure we're doing this in righteousness as people um, of God. We also got to be careful, too. We don't want to get high and mighty. My, my prayer is for myself. I don't want to get like some of these preachers on TV and get so happy with preaching and teaching until I start saying stuff that hurt my viewers. So I start saying stuff that hurt the people that support me. That's not how I want to be. So we got to pray about that, too, within ourselves. And we got to be careful and we got to be watchful, okay? Because that's a terrible thing when you're getting to a place of where you're becoming careless and you become so high and mighty like you done forgot where you came from. Now, there was something in the news recently, and I'm not calling names, but we see how that stuff can happen, okay? Something that became widely popular. And we ought not want to be known for being a person that gets into the pulpit and start putting down people that support your ministry, that look at you in awe, but you're making them feel horrible. Okay? So we got to also, in part of keeping focus, to be mindful of those things. Because when you don't, you're going to look foolish. And that type of stuff happens if you're not staying focused. If the person came and did what they were supposed to do in the beginning... And put the attention on God. That stuff wouldn't have happened. But that person. Was putting attention on foolishness. And that's why stuff like that happens. So that's why. That's why tunnel vision. Is powerful. When you when you um, approach things. Approach it with tunnel vision. So when God do elevate you. You're not using that place. To magnify foolishness. You're using that place. To magnify God. And to help heal and restore and comfort and encourage God's people. Okay. So that's what we want to be mindful of. So what I'm going to do here, um, I see some people on here. I want to say hello to Mrs. Dingle, Sarah, President Conyers, and a newcomer, Minister Kenneth Wilson Jr., it is nice to see all of you on here. Thank you for joining this live. I want you all to stay in power and to stay encouraged. Until next time, God bless you.